All right, hey, welcome. While we read about the Panic of 1837, which was a financial crisis, a major economic recession, and it lasted from the from 1837 about the time Jackson left office to the mid 1840s. If you remember, during the Bank War, Andrew Jackson had moved a lot of the money from the federal government uh, to several pet banks in his attempt to destroy the Second Bank of the United States. Once the Second Bank of the United States was shut down, these pet banks began using this large amount of money, this new money, to help fund loans to many people. For a few years after the bank war had ended, all of this new money financing loans caused a huge boom in the economy. Look at all this new money! Yay! About the time that Martin Van Buren became the eighth president and Jackson ended, concluded his presidency, it became time for those loans to be paid back. Gotta pay the money back. Sure. The federal government, seeing a large increase in the economy, began printing a lot more money. Look, the economy is growing, therefore we need more dollar bills to represent that. This meant that a lot of people had a lot of money, but it was based on people owing that money to the banks. This wealth was built on a foundation of debt and a foundation of a lack of real money. This, uh, there was also a lot of newly printed money based on this increase in borrowed money. The effect was to create a sort of bubble, a falsity in the economy, a bubble of borrowed money and too much printed money. And this bubble was recognized and identified. They knew it was there. And the value of money began to drop. This effect of there being too much money and the money built, being built on fakeness instead of honest hard work is called inflation. Depreciation the, who soon ran wild throughout the economy. Depreciation is when the value of money decreases. To combat this depreciation of money, Andrew Jackson, at the very end of his presidency, issued the Specie Circular. The Specie Circular was a law saying that the government would only accept gold or silver in payment for federal land. Foreign investors also recognized the dropping value of the American dollar and refused to accept payments unless it was made in gold or silver. Banks began to call in all of the previously issued loans, trying to save their falling values, causing many individuals, the regular people, to fall crazy deep in debt. People rushed to withdraw their money from banks to prevent it from being confiscated due uh, to pay debts that they obviously would not be able to pay. Too much money was quickly pulled out of the banks, and over 800 banks had to close. The banks no longer had a lot of money because they had loaned too much money and the government had printed too much money and the confidence of the people is what the economy is really based on. The stock market is built on confidence. The confidence of people in their money dropped. Northern banks began closing in massively large numbers. The economy of the South felt the most pressure. By the mid-1840s, many of the southern states began defaulting on their international trade loans. Defaulting meaning that they were straight up telling people that they had borrowed money from, we can't pay you back. This angered British creditors and made life especially difficult for the average farmer. Now, here's the big part. The end result was anger. A strong anger at the national government, its policies that had led to the panic. Since the South already favored state authority over national authority, this anger developed into increased sectionalism, contributing to the eventual civil war in 1861. Economists consider the nation generally recovered by 1843, but it would not be until the California gold rush of 1848 until the, na the nation saw real, strong economic gains again. So this is the Panic of 1837. I hope you're learning and I hope that you're having fun.